Hi, thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to look at using component roads in Infworks 360. Component roads were a new feature in 2017 and allow us to essentially model any road cross section to fully represent a road as we truly design it using cross slope, curb and gutter, green space, barriers, you name it, you can model it with a component road. Now, to get started creating component roads, let's convert one of our design roads into a component road. And we'll just use a very simple two-lane road. This allows us to start with a couple of lanes that we can then add on, adding in curb and gutter and all of the other elements to define a typical suburban road cross-section. To modify a component road, select the road, and then right click and look for the insert component option. You can choose any of the pieces that are available to you for right now. Once that piece is in place, select. And if you want to modify a road that you're actually going to use in place, you can use the little black grips to modify or pin a component to the beginning or ending of the road. If you just are working to make a cross section, it doesn't really matter how far they extend. So you can add in curb and gutter, sidewalk, green space, etc. Once you've completed the cross section that you need, you'll want to add that section to your library. Select the road and notice you'll have an option for add to library. Give this new road style or this new component road a name, and it will now be part of your library when you go to draw or engineer in a new road using the component road command. Now let's design a new road using our new 27 B2B standard road. We're just going to draw in a new piece of this subdivision, and we'll set the design speed uh, as we draw, and then we'll draw in a second road to essentially create a small neighborhood block in this area. Notice when we create and bring this curve around, right, we get the design intersections that you're used to. But here are some things we can do with component roads that we don't normally get from a style-based road. Notice the slope tying that road into the existing ground. Turning on the option to show grading, when I modify the grading method from fixed width to slope, I also get the available option to turn on a material. This lets me very easily see where that road design, where that road prof profile is going to tie into the existing ground. Modifying the road profile lets me see that almost instantaneously update and change, and I can use that texturing to give some quick feedback. Now let's take a look at adding some nonlinear elements to our road design. In this case, I'm going to place both a fire hydrant and a series of street lamps using essentially the same methodology. Simply right click and select place decoration on the road and then select the street decoration that you want to use. These can be any 3D element, but they're going to be spaced pretty regularly. Modify the spacing and then notice or zoom in and notice that the element on the road is set up right on top of where those two elements or two uh, pieces come together. So we'll often use a seam offset to push something in the right direction towards or away from the center line. You can repeat this same process for street lights, reflector buttons, any element that you want to have repeated over the length of a road, and it will become part of your design. Once you've placed those two elements in, they'll be part of your model and it's very easy to work with the spacing or other elements to make up a completed road design. Thanks for watching this video. To learn more, join the Infworks 360 community by visiting the website on your screen. There you'll see forums, the idea station for sharing your ideas, and infra tips where you can learn more ways to make Infworks 360 a more powerful part of your infrastructure workflow. Thanks again.